crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses the mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of piezoelectric material to create an electrical signal with a very precise frequency. This frequency is commonly used to keep track of time, to provide a stable clock signal for digital integrated circuits, and to stabilize frequencies for radio transmitters and receivers. The most common type of piezoelectric resonator used is the quartz crystal, so oscillator circuits incorporating them became known as crystal oscillators, but other piezoelectric materials including polycrystalline ceramics are used in similar circuits. Quartz crystals are manufactured for frequencies from a few tens of kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. More than two billion crystals are manufactured annually. Most are used for consumer devices such as wristwatches, clocks, radios, computers, and cell phones. Quartz crystals are also found inside test and measurement equipment, such as counters, signal generators, and oscilloscopes. History Piezoelectricity was discovered by Jacques and Pierre Curie in 1880. Paul Langevin first investigated quartz resonators for use in sonar during World War I. The first crystal-controlled oscillator, using a crystal of Rochelle salt, was built in 1917 and patented in 1918 by Alexander M. Nicholson at Bell Telephone Laboratories, although his priority was disputed by Walter Guyton Cady. Cady built the first quartz crystal oscillator in 1921. Other early innovators in quartz crystal oscillators include G. W. Pierce and Louis Essen. Quartz crystal oscillators were developed for high stability frequency references during the 1920s and 1930s. Prior to crystals, radio stations controlled their frequency with tuned circuits, which could easily drift off frequency by 3 to 4 kHz. Since stations were assigned frequencies only 10 kHz apart, interference between adjacent stations due to frequency drift was common. In 1925 Westinghouse tried out a crystal oscillator in its flagship station KDKA, and by 1926 quartz crystals were used to control the frequency of many broadcasting stations and were popular with amateur radio operators. In 1928, Warren Marison developed the first quartz crystal clock. This invention replaced the escape Munton pendulum, relying instead on the natural vibrations occurring in the quartz crystal as the oscillator. With accuracies of up to one second in 30 years, Quartz clocks became the world's most accurate timekeepers until atomic clocks were developed in the 1950s. Utilizing the early work at Bell Labs, AT&T eventually established their frequency control products division, later spun off and known today as Vectron International. A number of firms started producing quartz crystals for electronic use during this time. Using what are now considered primitive methods, about 100,000 crystal units were produced in the United States during 1939. Through World War II crystals were made from natural quartz crystal, virtually all from Brazil. Shortages of crystals during the war caused by the demand for accurate frequency control of military and naval radios and radars spurred post-war research into culturing synthetic quartz, and by 1950 a hydrothermal process for growing quartz crystals on a commercial scale was developed at Bell Laboratories. By the 1970s virtually all crystals used in electronics were synthetic. In 1968 Jürgen Stott invented a photolithographic process for manufacturing quartz crystal oscillators while working at North American Aviation that allowed them to be made small enough for portable products like watches. Although crystal oscillators still most commonly use quartz crystals, devices using other materials are becoming more common, such as ceramic resonators. Operation A crystal is a solid in which the constituent atoms, molecules, or ions are packed in a regularly ordered, repeating pattern extending in all three spatial dimensions. Almost any object made of an elastic material could be used like a crystal, with appropriate transducers, since all objects have natural resonant frequencies of vibration. For example, steel is very elastic and has a high speed of sound. It was often used in mechanical filters before quartz. The resonant frequency depends on size, shape, elasticity, and the speed of sound in the material. High frequency crystals are typically cut in the shape of a simple, rectangular plate. Low frequency crystals, such as those used in digital watches, 
are typically cut in the shape of a tuning fork. For applications not needing very precise timing, a low-cost ceramic resonator is often used in place of a quartz crystal. When a crystal of quartz is properly cut and mounted, it can be made to distort in an electric field by applying a voltage to an electrode near or on the crystal. This property is known as electrostriction or inverse piezoelectricity. When the field is removed, the quartz will generate an electric field as it returns to its previous shape, and this can generate a voltage. The result is that a quartz crystal behaves like a circuit composed of an inductor, capacitor and resistor, with a precise resonant frequency. Quartz has the further advantage that its elastic constants and its size change in such a way that the frequency dependence on temperature can be very low. The specific characteristics will depend on the mode of vibration and the angle at which the quartz is cut. Therefore, the resonant frequency of the plate, which depends on its size, will not change much either. This means that a quartz clock, filter or oscillator will remain accurate. For critical applications the quartz oscillator is mounted in a temperature-controlled container, called a crystal oven, and can also be mounted on shock absorbers to prevent perturbation by external mechanical vibrations. Modeling, electrical model. A quartz crystal can be modeled as an electrical network with a low impedance and a high impedance resonance point spaced closely together. Mathematically the impedance of this network can be written as or where S is the complex frequency, is the series resonant angular frequency and is the parallel resonant angular frequency. Adding additional capacitance across a crystal will cause the parallel resonance to shift downward. Adding additional inductance across a crystal will cause the resonance to shift upward. This can be used to adjust the frequency at which a crystal oscillates. Crystal manufacturers normally cut and trim their crystals to have a specified resonance frequency with a known load capacitance added to the crystal. For example, a crystal intended for AA6 picofarads load has its specified parallel resonance frequency when a 6.0 pf capacitor is placed across it. Without this capacitance, the resonance frequency is higher. Resonance modes A quartz crystal provides both series and parallel resonance. The series resonance is a few kilohertz lower than the parallel one. Crystals below 30 megahertz are generally operated between series and parallel resonance, which means that the crystal appears as an inductive reactance in operation, this inductance forming a parallel resonance circuit with externally connected parallel capacitance. Any small additional capacitance in parallel with a crystal will thus pull the frequency downwards. Moreover, the effective inductive reactance of the crystal can be reduced by adding a capacitor in series with the crystal. This latter technique can provide a useful method of trimming the oscillatory frequency within a narrow range. In this case inserting a capacitor in series with the crystal will raise the frequency of oscillation. For a crystal to operate at its specified frequency, the electronic circuit has to be exactly that specified by the crystal manufacturer. Note that these points imply a subtlety concerning crystal oscillators in this frequency range, the crystal does not usually oscillate at precisely either of his resonant frequencies. Crystals above 30 MHz are generally operated at series resonance where the impedance appears at its minimum and equal to the series resistance. For these crystals the series resistance is specified instead of the parallel capacitance. To reach higher frequencies, a crystal can be made to vibrate at one of its overtone modes, which occur near multiples of the fundamental resonant frequency. Only odd-numbered overtones are used. Such a crystal is referred to as a third, fifth, or even seventh overtone crystal. To accomplish this, the oscillator circuit usually includes additional LC circuits to select the desired overtone. Temperature effects a crystal's frequency characteristic depends on the shape or cut of the crystal. A tuning fork crystal is usually cut such that its frequency over temperature is a parabolic curve centered around 25 a degree Celsius. This means that a tuning fork crystal oscillator will resonate close to its target frequency at room temperature, but will slow down when the temperature either increases or decreases from room temperature. A common parabolic coefficient for a 32 a kilohertz tuning fork crystal is a 0.04 ppm a degree car squared. In a real application, 
This means that a clock built using a regular 32 kHz tuning fork crystal will keep good time at room temperature, lose 2 minutes per year at 10 degrees Celsius above room temperature and lose 8 minutes per year at 20 degrees Celsius above room temperature due to the quartz crystal. Electrical oscillators the crystal oscillator circuit sustains oscillation by taking a voltage signal from the quartz resonator, amplifying it, and feeding it back to the resonator. The rate of expansion and contraction of the quartz is the resonant frequency, and is determined by the cut and size of the crystal. When the energy of the generated output frequencies matches the losses in the circuit, an oscillation can be sustained. An oscillator crystal has two electrically conductive plates, with a slice or tuning fork of quartz crystal sandwiched between them. During startup, the controlling circuit places the crystal into an unstable equilibrium, and due to the positive feedback in the system, any tiny fraction of noise will start to get amplified, ramping up the oscillation. The crystal resonator can also be seen as a highly frequency selective filter in this system, it will only pass a very narrow subband of frequencies around the resonant one attenuating everything else. Eventually, only the resonant frequency will be active. As the oscillator amplifies the signals coming out of the crystal, the signals in the crystal frequency band will become stronger, eventually dominating the output of the oscillator. The narrow resonance band of the quartz crystal filters out all the unwanted frequencies. The output frequency of a quartz oscillator can be either that of the fundamental resonance or of a multiple of that resonance, called a harmonic frequency. Harmonics are an exact integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. But, like many other mechanical resonators, crystals exhibit several modes of oscillation, usually at approximately odd integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. These are termed overtone modes, and oscillator circuits can be designed to excite them. The overtone modes are at frequencies which are approximate, but not exact odd integer multiples of that of the fundamental mode, and overtone frequencies are therefore not exact harmonics of the fundamental. High frequency crystals are often designed to operate at third, fifth, or seventh overtones. Manufacturers have difficulty producing crystals thin enough to produce fundamental frequencies over 30 MHz. To produce higher frequencies, Manufacturers make overtone crystals tuned to put the third, fifth, or seventh overtone at the desired frequency, because they are thicker and therefore easier to manufacture than a fundamental crystal that would produce the same frequency a euro although exciting the desired overtone frequency requires a slightly more complicated oscillator circuit. A fundamental crystal oscillator circuit is simpler and more efficient and has more pullability than a third overtone circuit. Depending on the manufacturer. The highest available fundamental frequency may be 25 MHz to 66 MHz. A major reason for the wide use of crystal oscillators is their high Q factor. A typical Q value for a quartz oscillator ranges from 104 to 106, compared to perhaps 102 for an LC oscillator. The maximum Q for a high stability quartz oscillator can be estimated as Q equals 1.6 A, 107 per Fahrenheit where F is the resonance frequency in megahertz. One of the most important traits of quartz crystal oscillators is that they can exhibit very low phase noise. In many oscillators, any spectral energy at the resonant frequency will be amplified by the oscillator, resulting in a collection of tones at different phases. In a crystal oscillator, the crystal mostly vibrates in one axis, therefore only one phase is dominant. This property of low phase noise makes them particularly useful in telecommunications where stable signals are needed, and in scientific equipment where very precise time references are needed. Environmental changes of temperature, humidity, pressure, and vibration can change the resonant frequency of a quartz crystal, but there are several designs that reduce these environmental effects. These include the TCXO, MCXO, and OCXO. These designs often produce devices with excellent short-term stability. The limitations in short-term stability are due mainly to noise from electronic components in the oscillator circuits. Long-term stability is limited by aging of the crystal. Due to aging and environmental factors, it is difficult to keep even the best quartz oscillators within one part in 1010 of their nominal frequency without constant adjustment. 
For this reason, atomic oscillators are used for applications requiring better long-term stability and accuracy. Spurious frequencies for crystals operated at series resonance or pulled away from the main mode by the inclusion of a series inductor or capacitor, significant spurious responses may be experienced. Though most spurious modes are typically some tens of kilohertz above the wanted series resonance their temperature coefficient will be different from the main mode and the spurious response may move through the main mode at certain temperatures. Even if the series resistances at the spurious resonances appear higher than the one at wanted frequency a rapid change in the main mode series resistance can occur at specific temperatures when the two frequencies are coincidental. A consequence of these activity dips is that the oscillator may lock at a spurious frequency. This is generally minimized by ensuring that the maintaining circuit has insufficient gain to activate unwanted modes. Spurious frequencies are also generated by subjecting the crystal to vibration. This modulates the resonance frequency to a small degree by the frequency of the vibrations. SC cut crystals are designed to minimize the frequency effect of mounting stress and they are therefore less sensitive to vibration. Acceleration effects including gravity are also reduced with SC cut crystals as is frequency change with time due to long term mounting stress variation. There are disadvantages with SC cut shear mode crystals, such as the need for the maintaining oscillator to discriminate against other closely related unwanted modes and increased frequency change due to temperature when subject to a full ambient range. SC cut crystals are most advantageous where temperature control at their temperature of zero temperature coefficient is possible. Under these circumstances an overall stability performance from premium units can approach the stability of rubidium frequency standards. Commonly used crystal frequencies. Crystals can be manufactured for oscillation over a wide range of frequencies, from a few kilohertz up to several hundred megahertz. Many applications call for a crystal oscillator frequency conveniently related to some other desired frequency so hundreds of standard crystal frequencies are made in large quantities and stocked by electronics distributors. For example, many applications use 3.579545 a megahertz crystal since they are made in large quantities for NTSC color television receivers. Using frequency dividers, frequency multipliers and phase lock loop circuits, it is practical to derive a wide range of frequencies from one reference frequency. Crystal structures and materials. The most common material for oscillator crystals is quartz. At the beginning of the technology, natural quartz crystals were used. Now synthetic crystalline quartz grown by hydrothermal synthesis is predominant due to higher purity, lower cost, and more convenient handling. One of the few remaining uses of natural crystals is for pressure transducers and deep wells. During World War II and for some time afterwards, natural quartz was considered a strategic material by the USA. Large crystals were imported from Brazil. Raw laskers, the source material quartz for hydrothermal synthesis, are imported to USA or mined locally by Coleman Quartz. The average value of as grown synthetic quartz in 1994 was 60 US dollars per kilogram. Two types of quartz crystals exist left-handed and right-handed, differing in the optical rotation but identical in other physical properties. Both left- and right-handed crystals can be used for oscillators, if the cut angle is correct. In manufacture, right-handed quartz is generally used. The CO4 tetrahedrons form parallel helices. The direction of twist of the helix determines the left- or right-hand orientation. The helixes are aligned along the z-axis and merged, sharing atoms. The mass of the helixes forms a mesh of small and large channels parallel to the z-axis. The large ones are large enough to allow some mobility of smaller ions and molecules through the crystal. Quartz exists in several phases. At 573 a degree Celsius at one atmosphere the I plus or minus quartz undergoes quartz inversion, transforms reversibly to I squared quartz. The reverse process however is not entirely homogeneous and crystal twinning occurs. Care has to be taken during manufacture and processing to avoid the phase transformation. Other phases, for example the higher temperature phases tridomite and cristobalite, are not significant for oscillators. 
All quartz oscillator crystals are the I plus or minus quartz type. Infrared spectrophotometry is used as one of the methods for measuring the quality of the grown crystals. The wave numbers 3585, 3500, and 3410 Akmar 1 are commonly used. The measured value is based on the absorption bands of the OH radical and the infrared Q value is calculated. The electronic grade crystals, grade C, have Q of 1.8 million or above. The premium grade B crystals have Q of 2.2 million, and special premium grade A crystals have Q of 3.0 million. The Q value is calculated only for the Z region. Crystals containing other regions can be adversely affected. Another quality indicator is the etched channel density. When the crystal is etched, tubular channels are created along linear defects. For processing involving etching, for example a wristwatch tuning fork crystals, low etch channel density is desirable. The etch channel density for swept quartz is about 10 a euro 100 and significantly more for unswept quartz. Presence of etch channels and etch pits degrades the resonator's Q and introduces nonlinearities. Quartz crystals can be grown for specific purposes. Crystals for AT cut are the most common in mass production of oscillator materials. The shape and dimensions are optimized for high yield of the required wafers. High purity quartz crystals are grown with especially low content of aluminium, alkali metal and other impurities and minimal defects. The low amount of alkali metals provides increased resistance to ionizing radiation. Crystals for wristwatches, for cutting the tuning fork 32768 Hz crystals, are grown with very low etch channel density. Crystals for SAW devices are grown as flat, with large excise seed with low etch channel density. Special high Q crystals, for use in highly stable oscillators, are grown at constant slow speed and have constant low infrared absorption along the entire Z axis. Crystals can be grown as Y bar, with a seed crystal in bar shape and elongated along the Y axis, or a Z plate grown from a plate seed with y-axis direction length and x-axis width. The region around the seed crystal contains a large number of crystal defects and should not be used for the wafers. Crystals grow anisotropically. The growth along the z-axis is up to three times faster than along the x-axis. The growth direction and rate also influences the rate of uptake of impurities. Y-bar crystals, or z-plate crystals with long y-axis, have four growth regions usually called plus X, X, Z, and S. The distribution of impurities during growth is uneven. Different growth areas contain different levels of contaminants. The Z regions are the purest, the small occasionally present S regions are less pure, the plus X region is yet less pure, and the X region has the highest level of impurities. The impurities have a negative impact on radiation hardness susceptibility to twinning, filter loss, and long and short-term stability of the crystals. Different cut seeds in different orientations may provide other kinds of growth regions. The growth speed of the x-direction is slowest due to the effect of adsorption of water molecules on the crystal surface. Aluminium impurities suppress growth in two other directions. The content of aluminium is lowest in Z region, higher in plus X, yet higher in X and highest in S. The size of S regions also grows with increased amount of aluminium present. The content of hydrogen is lowest in Z region, higher in plus X region, yet higher in S region, and highest in X. Aluminium inclusions transform into color centers with gamma ray irradiation, causing a darkening of the crystal proportional to the dose and level of impurities. The presence of regions with different darkness reveals the different growth regions. The dominant type of defect of concern in quartz crystals is the substitution of an Al, 3, for a C, 4, atom in the crystal lattice. The aluminium ion has an associated interstitial charge compensator present nearby, which can be a H plus ion, Li plus ion, Na plus ion, K plus ion, or an electron hole trapped in a nearby oxygen atom orbital. The composition of the growth solution whether it is based on lithium or sodium alkali compounds, determines the charge compensating ions for the aluminium defects. 
the ion impurities are of concern as they are not firmly bound and can migrate through the crystal, altering the local lattice elasticity and the resonant frequency of the crystal. Other common impurities of concern are for example iron, 3, fluorine, boron, 3, phosphorus, B, titanium, 4, and germanium, 4. Sodium and iron ions can cause inclusions of ignite and eleemosite crystals. Inclusions of water may be present in fast-grown crystals. Interstitial water molecules are abundant near the crystal seed. Another defect of importance is the hydrogen-containing growth defect, when instead of a COC structure, a pair of COHHOC groups is formed. Essentially a hydrolyzed bond. Fast-grown crystals contain more hydrogen defects than slow-grown ones. These growth defect sources supply of hydrogen ions for radiation-induced processes and forming LOH defects. Germanium impurities tend to trap electrons created during a radiation. The alkali metal cations then migrate towards the negatively charged center and form a stabilizing complex. Matrix defects can also be present. Oxygen vacancies, silicon vacancies, pyroxy groups, etc. Some of the defects produce localized levels in the forbidden band, serving as charge traps. Al, 3, and B, 3, typically serve as hole traps while electron vacancies, titanium, germanium, and phosphorus atoms serve as electron traps. The trap charge carriers can be released by heating. Their recombination is the cause of thermoluminescence. The mobility of interstitial ions depends strongly on temperature. Hydrogen ions are mobile down to 10 K, but alkali metal ions become mobile only at temperatures around and above 200 kelvins. The hydroxyl defects can be measured by near-infrared spectroscopy. The trapped holes can be measured by electron spin resonance. The al plus defects show as an acoustic loss peak due to their stress-induced motion. The al li plus defects do not form a potential well so are not detectable this way. Some of the radiation-induced defects during their thermal annealing produce thermoluminescence. Defects related to aluminium, titanium, and germanium can be distinguished. Swept crystals are crystals that have undergone a solid-state electrodiffusion purification process. Sweeping involves heating the crystal above 500 degrees Celsius in a hydrogen-free atmosphere, with a voltage gradient of at least 1 kV per centimeter, for several hours. The migration of impurities and the gradual replacement of alkali metal ions with hydrogen or electron holes causes a weak electric current through the crystal. Decay of this current to a constant value signals the end of the process. The crystal is then left to cool, while the electric field is maintained. The impurities are concentrated at the cathode region of the crystal, which is cut off afterwards and discarded. Swept crystals have increased resistance to radiation, as the dose effects are dependent on the level of alkali metal impurities. They are suitable for use in devices exposed to ionizing radiation, for example for nuclear and space technology. Sweeping under vacuum at higher temperatures and higher field strengths yields yet more radiation-hard crystals. The level and character of impurities can be measured by infrared spectroscopy. Quartz can be swept in both I plus or minus and I squared phase. Sweeping in I squared phase is faster, but the phase transition may induce twinning. Twinning can be mitigated by subjecting the crystal to compression stress in the X direction, or an AC or DC electric field along the X axis while the crystal cools through the phase transformation temperature region. Sweeping can be also used to introduce one kind of an impurity into the crystal. Lithium sodium, and hydrogen swept crystals are used for for example studying quartz behavior. Very small crystals for high fundamental mode frequencies can be manufactured by photolithography. Crystals can be adjusted to exact frequencies by laser trimming. A technique used in the world of amateur radio for slight decrease of the crystal frequency may be achieved by exposing crystals with silver electrodes to vapors of iodine which causes a slight mass increase on the surface by forming a thin layer of silver iodide. Such crystals however had problematic long-term stability. 
Another method commonly used is electrochemical increase or decrease of silver electrode thickness by submerging a resonator in lapis dissolved in water, citric acid in water, or water with salt, and using the resonator as one electrode, and a small silver electrode as another. By choosing the direction of current, one can either increase or decrease the mass of electrodes. Details were published in Radio Magazine by UB5 Lev. Raising frequency by scratching off parts of the electrodes is advised against, as this may damage the crystal and lower its Q factor. Capacitor trimmers can be also used for frequency adjustment of the oscillator circuit. Some other piezoelectric materials than quartz can be employed. For example single crystals of lithium tantalate, lithium niobate, lithium borate, berlinite, gallium arsenide, lithium tetraborate, aluminium phosphate, bismuth germanium oxide, polycrystalline zirconium titanate ceramics, high alumina ceramics, silicon zinc oxide composite, or dipotassium tartrate. Some materials may be more suitable for specific applications. An oscillator crystal can be also manufactured by depositing the resonator material on the silicon chip surface. Crystals of gallium phosphate, langazite, langonite and langonate are about 10 times more pullable than the corresponding quartz crystals, and are used in some VCXO oscillators. Stability and aging, the frequency stability is determined by the crystal's Q. It is inversely dependent on the frequency, and on the constant that is dependent on the particular cut. Other factors influencing Q are the overturn used, the temperature, the level of driving of the crystal, the quality of the surface finish, the mechanical stresses imposed on the crystal by bonding and mounting, the geometry of the crystal and the attached electrodes, the material purity and defects in the crystal, type and pressure of the gas in the enclosure, interfering modes and presence and absorbed dose of ionizing and neutron radiation. Temperature influences the operating frequency. Various forms of compensation are used, from analog compensation and microcontroller compensation to stabilization of the temperature with a crystal oven. The crystals possess temperature hysteresis. The frequency at a given temperature achieved by increasing the temperature is not equal to the frequency on the same temperature achieved by decreasing the temperature. The temperature sensitivity depends primarily on the cut. The temperature compensated cuts are chosen as to minimize frequency temperature dependence. Special cuts can be made with linear temperature characteristics. The LC cut is used in quartz thermometers. Other influencing factors are the overturn used the mounting and electrodes, impurities in the crystal, mechanical strain, crystal geometry, rate of temperature change, thermal history, ionizing radiation, and drive level. Crystals tend to suffer anomalies in their frequency temperature and resistance temperature characteristics, known as activity dips. These are small downward or upward excursions localized at certain temperatures, with their temperature position dependent on the value of the load capacitors. Mechanical stresses also influence the frequency. The stresses can be induced by mounting, bonding, and application of the electrodes, by differential thermal expansion of the mounting, electrodes, and the crystal itself, by differential thermal stresses when there is a temperature gradient present, by expansion or shrinkage of the bonding materials during curing, by the air pressure that is transferred to the ambient pressure within the crystal enclosure, by the stresses of the crystal lattice itself by the surface imperfections and damage caused during manufacture, and by the action of gravity on the mass of the crystal. The frequency can therefore be influenced by position of the crystal. Other dynamic stress-inducing factors are shocks, vibrations, and acoustic noise. Some cuts are less sensitive to stresses. The SC cut is an example. Atmospheric pressure changes can also introduce deformations to the housing, influencing the frequency by changing stray capacitances. Atmospheric humidity influences the thermal transfer properties of air, and can change electrical properties of plastics by diffusion of water molecules into their structure, altering the dielectric constants and electrical conductivity. Other factors influencing the frequency are the power supply voltage, load impedance, magnetic fields, electric fields, the presence and absorbed dose of I-cubed particles and ionizing radiation, and the age of the crystal. 
crystals undergo slow gradual change of frequency with time, known as aging. There are many mechanisms involved. The mounting and contacts may undergo relief of the built-in stresses. Molecules of contamination either from the residual atmosphere, outgassed from the crystal, electrodes or packaging materials, or introduced during sealing the housing can be adsorbed on the crystal surface, changing its mass. This effect is exploited in quartz crystal microbalances. The composition of the crystal can be gradually altered by outgassing, diffusion of atoms of impurities or migrating from the electrodes, or the lattice can be damaged by radiation. Slow chemical reactions may occur on or in the crystal, or on the inner surfaces of the enclosure. Electrode material, for example chromium or aluminium, can react with the crystal, creating layers of metal oxide and silicon. These interface layers can undergo changes in time. The pressure in the enclosure can change due to varying atmospheric pressure, temperature, leaks, or outgassing of the materials inside. Factors outside of the crystal itself are for example aging of the oscillator circuitry, and drift of parameters of the crystal oven. External atmosphere composition can also influence the aging. Hydrogen can diffuse through nickel housing. Helium can cause similar issues when it diffuses through glass enclosures of rubidium standards. Gold is a favored electrode material for low aging resonators. Its adhesion to quartz is strong enough to maintain contact even at strong mechanical shocks, but weak enough to not support significant strain gradients. Gold also does not form oxides. It adsorbs organic contaminants from the air, but these are easy to remove. However, gold alone can undergo delamination. A layer of chromium is therefore sometimes used for improved binding strength. Silver and aluminium are often used as electrodes. However both form oxide layers with time that increases the crystal mass and lowers frequency. Silver can be passivated by exposition to iodine vapors, forming a layer of silver iodide. Aluminium oxidizes readily but slowly, until about 5 nm thickness is reached. Increased temperature during artificial aging does not significantly increase the oxide forming speed. A thick oxide layer can be formed during manufacture by anodizing. Exposition of silver-plated crystal to iodine vapors can be also used in amateur conditions for lowering the crystal frequency slightly. The frequency can be also increased by scratching off parts of the electrodes, but that carries risk of damage to the crystal and loss of Q. ADC voltage bias between the electrodes can accelerate the initial aging, probably by induced diffusion of impurities through the crystal. Placing a capacitor in series with the crystal and a several megaohm resistor in parallel can minimize such voltages. Crystals suffer from minor short-term frequency fluctuations as well. The main causes of such noise are for example thermal noise, phonon scattering, adsorption-desorption of molecules on the surface of the crystal, noise of the oscillator circuits, mechanical shocks and vibrations, acceleration and orientation changes, temperature fluctuations and relief of mechanical stresses. The short-term stability is measured by four main parameters, Allen variance, phase noise, spectral density of phase deviations, and spectral density of fractional frequency deviations. The effects of acceleration and vibration tend to dominate the other noise sources. Surface acoustic wave devices tend to be more sensitive than bulk acoustic wave ones, and the stress-compensated cuts are even less sensitive. The relative orientation of the acceleration vector to the crystal dramatically influences the crystal's vibration sensitivity. Mechanical vibration isolation mountings can be used for high stability crystals. Crystals are sensitive to shock. The mechanical stress causes a short term change in the oscillator frequency due to the stress sensitivity of the crystal, and can introduce a permanent change of frequency due to shock induced changes of mounting and internal stresses. Desorption of contamination from the crystal surfaces, or change in parameters of the oscillator circuit. High magnitudes of shocks may tear the crystals off their mountings, or cause cracking of the crystal. Crystals free of surface imperfections are highly shock resistant. Chemical polishing can produce crystals able to survive tens of thousands g. Phase noise plays significant role in frequency synthesis systems using frequency multiplication. 
a multiplication of a frequency by n increases the phase noise power by n2. A frequency multiplication by 10 times multiplies the magnitude of the phase error by 10 times. This can be disastrous for systems employing for example PLL or FSK technologies. Crystals are somewhat sensitive to radiation damage. Natural quartz is much more sensitive than artificially grown crystals, and sensitivity can be further reduced by sweeping the crystal or euro heating the crystal to at least 400 degrees Celsius in a hydrogen-free atmosphere in an electric field of at least 500 a volt per centimeter for at least 12 hours. Such swept crystals have a very low response to steady ionizing radiation. Some C, 4, atoms are replaced with Al, 3, impurities, each having a compensating Li plus or Na plus cation nearby. Ionization produces electron hole pairs. The holes are trapped in a lattice near the Al atom, the resulting Li and Na atoms are loosely trapped along the Z axis. The change of the lattice near the Al atom and the corresponding elastic constant then causes a corresponding change in frequency. Sweeping removes the Li plus and Na plus ions from the lattice, reducing this effect. The Al3 plus side can also trap hydrogen atoms. All crystals have a transient negative frequency shift after exposure to an X-ray pulse. The frequency then shifts gradually back. Natural quartz reaches stable frequency after 10 a euro 1000 seconds, with a negative offset to pre-irradiation frequency, artificial crystals return to a frequency slightly lower or higher than pre-irradiation, swept crystals anneal virtually back to original frequency. The annealing is faster at higher temperatures. Sweeping under vacuum at higher temperatures and field strength can further reduce the crystal's response to X-ray pulses. Series resistance of unswept crystals increases after an X-ray dose, and anneals back to a somewhat higher value for a natural quartz and back to pre-irradiation value for synthetic crystals. Series resistance of swept crystals is unaffected. Increase of series resistance degrades Q. Too high increase can stop the oscillations. Neutron radiation induces frequency changes by introducing dislocations into the lattice by knocking out atoms. A single fast neutron can produce many defects. The SC and AT cut frequency increases roughly linearly with absorbed neutron dose, while the frequency of the BT cuts decreases. Neutrons also alter the temperature frequency characteristics. Frequency change at low ionizing radiation doses is proportionally higher than for higher doses. High intensity radiation can stop the oscillator by inducing photoconductivity in the crystal and transistors. With a swept crystal and properly designed circuit, the oscillations can restart within 15 microseconds after the radiation burst. Quartz crystals with high levels of alkali metal impurities lose Q with a radiation. Q of swept artificial crystals is unaffected. Irradiation with higher doses lowers sensitivity to subsequent doses. Very low radiation doses have disproportionately higher effect, but this nonlinearity saturates at higher doses. At very high doses, the radiation response of the crystal saturates as well, due to the finite number of impurity sites that can be affected. Magnetic fields have little effect on the crystal itself, as quartz is diamagnetic. Eddy currents or AC voltages can however be induced into the circuits, and magnetic parts of the mounting and housing may be influenced. After the power-up, the crystals take several seconds to minutes to warm up, and stabilize their frequency. The oven-controlled OCXOs require usually 3 euro 10 minutes for heating up to reach thermal equilibrium. The oven-less oscillators stabilize in several seconds as the few milliwatts dissipated in the crystal cause a small but noticeable level of internal heating. Crystals have no inherent failure mechanisms. Some have operated in devices for decades. Failures may be, however, introduced by faults in bonding, leaky enclosures, corrosion, frequency shift by aging, breaking the crystal by too high mechanical shock, or radiation-induced damage when non-schwept quartz is used. Crystals can be also damaged by overdriving. The crystals have to be driven at the appropriate drive level. While AT cuts tend to be fairly forgiving, with only their electrical parameters, 
stability and aging characteristics being degraded when overdriven, low-frequency crystals, especially flexural mode ones, may fracture at too high drive levels. The drive level is specified as the amount of power dissipated in the crystal. The appropriate drive levels are about 5 microwatts for flexural modes up to 100 a kilohertz, 1 a microwatt for fundamental modes at 1 a euro 4 a megahertz, 0.5 microwatts for fundamental modes for a euro 20 a megahertz, and 0.5 microwatts for overtone modes at 20 a euro 200 a megahertz. Too low drive level may cause problems with starting the oscillator. Low drive levels are better for higher stability and lower power consumption of the oscillator. Higher drive levels, in turn, reduce the impact of noise by increasing the signal to noise ratio. The stability of AT cut crystals decreases with increasing frequency. For more accurate higher frequencies it is better to use a crystal with lower fundamental frequency, operating at an overtone. Aging decreases logarithmically with time, the largest changes occurring shortly after manufacture. Artificially aging a crystal by prolonged storage at 85 to 125 degrees Celsius can increase its long-term stability. A badly designed oscillator circuit may suddenly begin oscillating on an overtone. In 1972, a train infant, California crashed due to a faulty oscillator. An inappropriate value of the tank capacitor caused the crystal in a control board to be overdriven, jumping to an overtone, and causing the train to speed up instead of slow down. Crystal cuts, the resonator plate can be cut from the source crystal in many different ways. The orientation of the cut influences the crystal's aging characteristics, frequency stability, thermal characteristics, and other parameters. These cuts operate at bulk acoustic wave. For higher frequencies, surface acoustic wave devices are employed. Image of several crystal cuts, the T in the cut name marks a temperature compensated cut, a cut oriented in a way that the temperature coefficients of the lattice are minimal. The FC and SC cuts are also temperature compensated. The high frequency cuts are mounted by their edges, usually on springs. The stiffness of the spring has to be optimal, as if it is too stiff, mechanical shocks could be transferred to the crystal and cause it to break, and too little stiffness may allow the crystal to collide with the inside of the package when subjected to a mechanical shock, and break. Strip resonators, usually AT cuts, are smaller and therefore less sensitive to mechanical shocks. At the same frequency and overtone, the strip will have less pullability, higher resistance, and higher temperature coefficient. The low frequency cuts are mounted at the nodes where they are virtually motionless. Thin wires are attached at such points on each side between the crystal and the leads. The large mass of the crystal suspended on the thin wires makes the assembly sensitive to mechanical shocks and vibrations. The crystals are usually mounted in hermetically sealed glass or metal cases, filled with a dry and inert atmosphere, usually vacuum, nitrogen, or helium. Plastic housings can be used as well, but those are not hermetic and another secondary ceiling has to be built around the crystal. Several resonator configurations are possible, in addition to the classical way of directly attaching leads to the crystal. For example the BVA resonator, developed in 1976. The parts that influence the vibrations are machined from a single crystal, and the electrodes are deposited not on the resonator itself but on the inner sides of two condenser discs made of adjacent slices of the quartz from the same bar, forming a three-layer sandwich with no stress between the electrodes and the vibrating element. The gap between the electrodes and the resonator act as two small series capacitors, making the crystal less sensitive to circuit influences. The architecture eliminates the effects of the surface contacts between the electrodes, the constraints in the mounting connections, and the issues related to ion migration from the electrodes into the lattice of the vibrating element. The resulting configuration is rugged, resistant to shock and vibration, resistant to acceleration and ionizing radiation, and has improved aging characteristics. A T-cut is usually used, though SC-cut variants exist as well. BVA resonators are often used in spacecraft applications. In the 1930s to 1950s, it was fairly common for people to adjust the frequency of the crystals by manual grinding. 
the crystals were ground using a fine abrasive slurry, or even a toothpaste, to increase their frequency. A slight decrease by 1 a euro 2 a kilohertz when the crystal was overground was possible by marking the crystal face with a pencil lead, at the cost of a lowered Q. The frequency of the crystal is slightly adjustable by modifying the attached capacitances. A baractor, a diode with capacitance depending on applied voltage, is often used in voltage-controlled crystal oscillators, VCXO. The crystal cuts are usually AT or rarely SC, and operate in fundamental mode. The amount of available frequency deviation is inversely proportional to the square of the overtone number, so a third overtone will have only one-ninth of the pullability of the fundamental mode. SC cuts, while more stable, are significantly less pullable. Circuit notations and abbreviations, on electrical schematic diagrams, crystals are designated with a class letter Y oscillators, whether they are crystal oscillators or other, are designated with a class letter G on occasion, one may see a crystal designated on a schematic with X or XTAL, or a crystal oscillator with XO, but these forms are deprecated. Crystal oscillator types and their abbreviations ATCXO a Euro analog temperature controlled crystal oscillator, CDXO a Euro calibrated dual crystal oscillator, DTCXO a Euro digital temperature compensated crystal oscillator, EMXO a Euro evacuated miniature crystal oscillator, GPSDO a Euro global positioning system disciplined oscillator, MCXO a Euro microcomputer compensated crystal oscillator. OCVCXO a Euro oven controlled voltage controlled crystal oscillator, OCXO a Euro oven controlled crystal oscillator, RBXO a Euro rubidium crystal oscillators, a crystal oscillator synchronized with a built in rubidium standard which is run only occasionally to save power, TCVCXO a Euro temperature compensated voltage controlled crystal oscillator, TCXO a Euro temperature compensated crystal oscillator. TMXO a Euro Tactical Miniature Crystal Oscillator, TSXO a Euro Temperature Sensing Crystal Oscillator, an adaptation of the TCXO, VCTCXO a Euro Voltage Controlled Temperature Compensated Crystal Oscillator, VCXO a Euro Voltage Controlled Crystal Oscillator, see also, Clock Drift a Euro Clock Drift measurements of crystal oscillators can be used to build random number generators. Crystal Filter Quartz crystal microbalance using crystal oscillators for weighing extremely small amounts. Irad Kiat's work on electronic tuning forks and with quartz crystals for precise signal frequencies, Pierce oscillator, VFO a Euro variable frequency oscillator, references. Further reading, A.K. Podder, U.L. Rood, a Euro OE crystal oscillator a Euro, Wiley Encyclopedia and Electronics in Jinring Euro, pages 1 to 38. October 19, 2012. Ulrich L. Rood Microwave and Wireless Synthesizers, Theory and Design, John Wiley and Sons, August 1997, ISBN 0-471-52019-5. External links, Introduction to Quartz Frequency Standards, What is a Quartz Crystal Device? QIAJ. Quartz Crystal Industry ASIC. Of Japan. 2007. Retrieved August 10, 2008. A. Marvin E. Fking. 50 Years of Progress in Quartz Crystal Frequency Standards. Proc 1996 IEEE Frequency Control Symposium. Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers PPA 33 Euro 46. Retrieved March 31, 2009. A. Distortions in Crystal Oscillators, Quartz Crystal Resonators and Oscillators.